in a showdown with NBA star Charles Barkley. The making of TV's hottest commercial on Scientific American Frontier. Also, a promising career cut short. The only hope? Poison. Natural leaders make good liars? What's going on? <laughs> and crazy machines, they break their inventors' hearts. It's all on Scientific American Frontier. GTE brings you more than the power of telecommunications products and services. A grant from GTE also brings you the power of a new world in Scientific American Frontier. engineering design course must create a machine solely from the materials provided. In six weeks, their machines will compete in a contest. And they'll be graded on how well their machines perform. It's great. It's scary. Most of the students have never built anything before. These science wizards are discovering that an idea is good only if it can be built. That means rolling up their sleeves and handling a drill as well as a calculator. And as 200 students compete for tools, life in the shop becomes frantic. This is the contest playing field. Two tables separated by horizontal pipes about six feet long. In the center is the goal, a plexiglass cylinder with a partition running down the middle. In just 30 seconds, the machines have to deliver ping pong balls to their side of the goal. Each machine can carry as many balls as you want, but Everything must fit into a one-foot cube. The machine that delivers the most balls wins. The biggest challenge is a good idea, and students look for inspiration anywhere they can. For example, Rob Graham plays football for MIT. The competitive strategy he uses in the field sparked Rob's plan. Drive straight down the line. My idea is to drive out on both cylinders, and then once I get to the goal, dump my box of balls into the goal. So I'll start in a position about like this, and these will be my stress. And I'll start like this, and then I'll have pneumatic pistons that will force the stress down and drive out to the goal. As soon as Rob finishes building each element of his vehicle, he tests the whole design. Testing is the only way to avoid nasty surprises. And there are always surprises. The problem is that it's too heavy and it falls through the other pipes. So hopefully the, the box of ping pong balls will weigh less than the masonite. This is Heather Clobert. Heather is an engineering major and a member of MIT's fencing team. For her, competition means speed, aggression, and marksmanship. My basic concept is a frog. I want to leap, carrying all the balls with me, land on the target, and dump them. To do this, I have a frog using the constant force springs and it's going to launch off of a lily pad or a, a weighted pad that won't move and will provide enough friction. Speed and aggression are there, but the marksmanship needs work. Heather's frog design almost croaked. According to contest rules, ping pong balls can be launched, but machines can't. 
She got around this by combining her launcher, these coil springs, with her ball carrier. So the frog takes its power source with it, and that makes it legal. The students are scrambling, and that warms the heart of their instructor, Professor Harry West. At this stage, when the students' machines don't work very well, they become very teachable. The machines themselves are teaching. When the students make a mistake, the machine lets the student know that it doesn't work. Ping pong balls are flying. So are rumors. I've heard rumors of a machine that can dump 40 ping pong balls in two seconds. Oh, I, I heard about one that um that supposedly ships 40 balls in 20 in two, in two seconds. I've heard about people who can get like 400 balls in in like. $99.99 a month. It's the wave of the future, so go ahead and get yours today at Remco. At the men's warehouse, two hundred ninety dollars. The box is placed on a spring-loaded catapult. When released, the catapult launches the box through the air. It's a great design, but it has one big problem: it's not legal. Unlike Heather's frog, this launcher doesn't travel to the goal. He'll have to redesign it. Contest day. The students may not be in such good shape, but their machines are ready for action. You can shoot balls. You can reach out. You can fight head to head. You could even drive off the road. As long as you get the most balls in your side, you win. Rob's vehicle on the white side of the table is competing against a pop gun design on the orange side. It's a slow start. His wheels hardly hit the ground before the pop gun machine begins to fire. It's down the tubes for Rob. I had too much friction on the bottom of my machine, and these little knobs I thought weren't getting less than enough so I could drive off. So, uh, it didn't work nearly as well as I had hoped. For her first round, Heather is as jumpy as her frog. She's up against a Model 2. The leaf is just short of the goal. I just added too many ping pong balls and it was too much weight. And the frog didn't jump as far as I thought it would. But I learned a lot and it was really enjoyable. This is the former mystery machine, now completely redesigned. Chris has built an extending arm with a blocker attached to the front. An aggressive defense. He's up against the vehicle. And it's over quickly for Chris. Here's what happened. His arm shoots too long, so his blocker hits the center divider. Chris defeats himself. The practice attempt that we made just before that was perfect, so I don't know what happened. A little bit of luck is involved in this. <laughs> Scientific American Frontier. 